I guess we'll just start in with the questions that we have. Wait, let me open this. Okay. Um, have you tried contacting the likes of Sam Harris and Richard Dawkins, who are supporters of a rational society? Uh, we did talk about it at one time. We haven't done that, but we will put them on our list, the media list that people are working on to contact others. If anybody would like to help in this area, uh, please get in touch with those in the media team. Okay, this isn't a question, so I don't know what they're... They say monetary value is not the only value material things can have. That's a you can, right, you can have emotional attachments to an art piece. I, I don't know. There's no question there, so I don't know what they want to know about that or asking anything. Um, how would we keep people from taking each other's unique things they like without laws? I guess they're talking about art pieces or something that they're emotionally attached to if it's the same person. They can make prints and copies, you know. There'd be no no problem there. Well do you feel people that are brought up not to do you feel that people would have their own private art collection? I doubt that. There'd be many museums. And we would ask people that owned an art collection to donate it to the tours so that other people can enjoy it. And if they don't want to do that? We say they refused. And I've heard you say, and you put in the paper, this person refused to put their artwork on tour so yeah. others can share it, and they, I think eventually they'd come That's around. That's the transition only. Right. That would not occur after the orientation. Okay, this person is asking, what, what would happen if there's some kind of val uh, violence would happen and uh, you could not prevent it? During the transition, that will occur. And there's nothing much we can do as a damaged people during the transition. After the Venus Project is established, we can do a lot to help people. Yeah, especially the children. Well, do you have something like jail in that case no. in the transition? No. How we have volunteers that will come in and help. We don't confine anybody unless they're mentally ill and uh, we haven't any means of controlling them. And I think uh, that the mentally ill will, will be not given pills to quiet them down, but we'll be working on them in whatever area we can. Would entertainment like video games and movies still be present in the Venus Only Project? Only during the transition. I'll finish the sentence in the Venus Project's future, or would they only be allowed if they are educational? It isn't allowed. Most everything will be related to the real world, uh, except when you write fiction. It will be mentioned that this is science fiction, the story. That will be permitted if you announce that it's science fiction, that this has not been verified. This is not verifiable, it's a story. What would you like to know? Um, yeah, I just want to make sure people understand me. Yeah, I used to speak too fast, I thought, for people to grasp it. The subject matter is not easy, so I speak slowly to make sure people understand. Um, I had just finished reading Jacques 1974-1980 lecture series, A1 Optimal Tools. In it, Jacques talks about how he's able to condition someone to enjoy yielding. Uh, enjoy could, what? Yielding. I don't remember that lecture no. exactly. Could Jacques go into more detail on how he would do this? I would give them, as best I can, the same values that enable me and other people to transition from one value system to another. And in that way, that takes time. It depends on how badly damaged the people are by the culture. The time that would be required would depend on the extent and the years of indoctrination to whatever it is that they tend to support, which has no basis, no physical basis. We would try our best to reach them without hurting them or putting them in prison or putting them in on drugs. 
And he no, says, I would not do that. What books? Uh, uh, what what books did you read to learn this information? We have a book list on our website. Yes, that has a book. you okay. can consult that book list. Okay, then he says, I've checked out the reading list, and the only suggesting suggested reading material for psychology appears to be B.F. Skinner. No, not really. Um, I don't think you need uh, any particular school of psychology. I think the the book, the best that money can buy, will give you a pretty good idea of the psychology used in training, in educating people. There really aren't any psychologists that no. take this point of view. Not to my of, knowledge. Yeah. I would say not to my knowledge. Not an integrated psychology that integrates all social systems into a cooperative working system. Most of them have little philosophies related to behavioral disturbances, which is not psychology. I'm talking about a science of human behavior, which is very different than present day psychologists. They deal with certain aspects, but in this society, for every person you're able to save, the society reduces hundreds of different aberrant patterns of behavior. It's a no-win situation. Are there any plans to release further older lectures from the 70s and 80s? I find them fascinating and very informative. Yes, they are terrific. We do have many more. Um, we've been on other things right now. We're working, completing a documentary that hopefully as soon as music is put on, we'll be out in a month and then we can get back to making more of those. We just, um, somebody just got in touch with us that used to go to Jacques' lectures in 1974, 1973, and he's got hundreds of hours of tape that he's sending us, so we will have more things out. In the book, The Best That Money Can't Buy, it says the concept of common good is global in nature, but local in implementation. I don't understand what you mean. Can you explain that? Well, some countries that are relatively primitive uh, would take longer than other countries. It depends on the status of the country, how much resources they have, and how much is available for people, and how back some of the people are. So different countries would require different presentations. For example, in the South, where you have members of the Ku Klux Klan or the White Citizens Council, uh, you have a lot of distorted behavior in different regions, so different types of films would have to be made to reach a different value system. The same film that would work in Maine would not work in Tennessee. Jacques stated in an interview lecture that he also does a lecture, I believe he called Limit, Limited limited dimension, I think it was limitless dimensions, it really is, Limit, limitless dimensions in human stupi stupidity. Do you have any intention of releasing this lecture in the future? We don't have that lecture. It's already released by the remarks made by the Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> but I mean, that was the name of your lecture. He was asking if we, if we have a release of that lecture. I don't think that was ever on tape. Yes, it was, indirectly, indirectly. In the earlier tapes. Yeah. We're What's the question? Well, that was the end of the questions that we had. Let's see if there's more. Yeah, I already uh, forwarded some to you. Please check the tab at the bottom. Okay, thanks, Ben. Um, I'm interested in more details about possible future projects in the transition period. I've heard Jack speaking about floating hospitals, about uh, cheap and nutritious food that we can dry and send to poor nations, except the major motion picture. Okay. Uh, okay, in the major motion picture, in the series you have planned, in the education centers, of course. What else can you tell me about future projects? Future projects will equip all labs with the best of equipment available at the time to pursue these undeveloped or unanswered questions. For example, 
But I think um, I think he's talking about our specific prob- projects with the Venus project. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. So we will investigate all areas, but the investigation would not be theoretical. It would be based upon fundamental factors that shape human behavior. I've said this many times. All human behavior is shaped by culture. Uh, fear, ignorance, all that greed, uh, egocentric behavior, all that is supported by our culture. We would have to undo that through education, not laws. We don't pass laws and say, say no to drugs. We expose people to the detrimental effects, then it's up to them to choose. In other words, if they want to take it on, we will counsel them whenever they want it. But if they want to smoke pot or whatever they want to do, that would be up to each individual to make that decision. Abortion would not be dealt with by a committee. How would it be dealt with? Only by each individual and their selected choice. But they will always be exposed to varying ideas, the useful effects of narcotics and the dangerous effects of narcotics. They'll be given all sides of an issue. And it'll be up to them to choose which direction they wish to take. In terms of the transition, talking about doing floating hospitals or nutritious food, how would the transition be organized? <clears throat> the transition can only be organized in terms of the values of people. In mm-hmm. other words, if most people do not understand the direction of the Venus Project. Emphasis would be put on those directions where people do not understand it through films, and diagrams and demonstrations, mostly demonstrations rather than taking people's word for things. They will show films on the development of cultures, how cultures evolve, how they undergo transition, just like architecture, engineering. The earliest concepts of engineering will be presented and the evolution of social development. This is the best we can do up to now. Besides education, which is really necessary during the whole transition, what steps would be taken if we had access to resources to do what was necessary to further the aims of the Venus Project? We will educate children and adults through television as to how we relate to nature and to one another. And the building process. What, what would be done first? First, a survey committee would tell us what's available, how much concrete or how much steel is available, and how many cases of tuberculosis, heart disease, cancer. That determines how many hospitals we build. It has nothing to do with a committee putting up hospitals. It's always based upon survey information. And also the first push would be towards um, sustainable energy. Yes. There'd be a and that huge would be, group working on that. That would be harnessing wave power, wind power, ocean currents, uh, utilizing the Gulf Stream. Uh, temperature differential. Temperature differential in the sea. Uh, many other systems, heat concentrators, photovoltaics, many different systems. There's more than enough out there for us to harness energy. But most available throughout the world would be geothermal energy, which can be developed. I've heard you also talk about being able to um, put people in in certain areas so you can house and feed them easily. Well, with the redistribution, redistribution of the population so you don't have lots of people in scarcity areas. The redistribution of population would be voluntary, not forced. People will be educated to understand that. People keep bringing this up. What if everybody wanted to live in Florida? Everybody doesn't want to live in Florida. Some people like the change of seasons. As you flow over Florida, you'll see hundreds of thousands of undeveloped acres. Not everybody wants to live in Florida or Panama. So you see, 
there are people that like skiing, ice skating. They love the change of seasons. So I would say that this assumption that people make, what if everybody wants to live in Georgia? Everybody doesn't want to live in Georgia. This person is asking if we buy the best that money can't buy from the website. Um, well, if you buy it from the website, you're, you're getting a hard, hard copy from us unless you buy it from Amazon, which is very expensive. They're asking if we get the latest edition where the typos are taken out. No, um, we've just had thousands of them printed where we, we couldn't afford to have it redone and take out all the typos at the same time. But uh, hopefully we've just had Sean work with us and taking out some of the typos in them. And the next edition, after we sell these books, we will be able to print and, and work on that as well, get rid of all the typos. I don't know about all the titles. Yeah, a great deal of them. And then they're saying, when will the book be available on Kindle? Um, we are working on that right now, actually. There's somebody we're working with who does that type of thing for business, and he's helping us. And we are getting um, some of our e-books and a lot of other materials even on Kindle. With, even with the typos, the basic information is assimilable, even with the typos. Yeah, that's true. You won't get the information elsewhere. So we will be having the best that money can't buy. They're working on that too to get it on Kindle and the and the like of Kindle. I'm also sorry that the language is subject to interpretation, but that has to do with the transition. Uh, very few people can communicate with one another. The only language that's not subject to interpretation is mathematics, chemistry, basic science, engineering principles, and applied agriculture. But other than that, many, many th systems today are subject to interpretation. The book, 125 Utopias and Why They Failed, do you know the author of that? No, I don't remember. It was so long ago, over 60 years ago. Um, so I can't tell you that. I'm sorry about that. In order to bridge a gap between the future and today, what is the first step we should take as to how to move forward education, I would say? Yes, that what... informing people as to the validity of the methods of science, not necessarily scientists. If there was such a thing as a scientist, you'd have social change. A scientist would not just stop in the field of chemistry or genetics or engineering. They would ask all kinds of questions. Why do societies go to war? Why is there conflict? Why do certain human beings commit crimes? They would investigate all areas. That's why you have scientists today in rigid regional areas, which is not enough. Science has to be organized to the nature of the physical world. And so we learn to live in accordance with the carrying capacity of the Earth's resources. We don't have organized science yet. We're at the very early stages of uh, what you call civilization. We are not civilized yet. As long as you have armies, navies, police, prisons, and man-made laws that do not correspond with the nature of the physical world, you have problems. Somebody's asking, what abilities do I have to openly advocate in a productive way? I'd say uh, go to our website under Get Involved. We have a lot of groups there that are advocating this direction and a lot of things that different people are doing. And if you have any skills in any of those groups, um, please join one or start an activism team in your area if you don't have one or join one in your area and work with them. Um, okay, somebody, Nate, asked a question. Um, I'd say drop me an email, Nate, at meadows at the Venus Project dot com. He's, he's asking if he can come out here and live and work. But just drop me an email about that. Um, I'd like to ask Jack what he thinks about trying to reach a resource-based economy with Gandhi's strategy, no violence. Would it be a good idea for one or two people to stand for the, I guess that's resource-based economy in each country using Gandhi's idea right now? No, Gandhi's idea would not work until the system fails. 
I've said this many times, but people keep asking the same question. You cannot superimpose a social system over an existing system without using force. So I would say education is the best force we can use, non-military forces. And to get people to share resources and ideas would elevate the human value system so that all people benefit. When you have patents and you have corporations, they tend to keep ideas to themselves to maintain the competitive edge. I've said this over and over again. People seem to ask the same questions over and over again. I rarely get any new questions. It might be new to this. What does Jacques think of Anne Rand and her philosophy? BS. Bad science. <laughs> Terrible. It really supports the free enterprise system and the values that it aspires to. Are we anywhere near the transition now, and how will we know when we are? We are going through it now all over the world. Different nations uh, are trying to get rid of their leaders, but I haven't read what they would superimpose in their place. They really don't know what to do. And this is why you have to get the methods of science, not science, the methods of science applied to the social system. So we understand our relationship to one another. So we develop a language that's not subject to interpretation. Once we do that, we're well on the way toward being civilized. As long as you have the opinions of everybody available, opinions are very dangerous because they're not based upon scientific studies. But you can say this is what we found out factually uh, with our limited access to certain types of information. This is what we find out today. It's up to you to abstract from that that which is relevant. Science is not perfect. It's just a better method of evaluation than earlier systems where you had the opinions of people which were superimposed as though that was the truth. They used to call human behavior human nature. Some people are lazy, some are hardworking, some are creative, some aren't. All that is BS, bad science. What do you think? When will the turning point come, months or years away? The turning point is undergoing change right now throughout the world. That's a turning point. It's up to you, not just Fresco and Roxanne. Don't put it all on us. It's how much work you do on the outside trying to convert people and telling them about the, the gains and the values of the Venus Project and how useful it might be to society. If you don't understand that, if you meet with religious opposition, tell them the Venus Project is a translation of all religions the end of war, the end of poverty, the brotherhood of humanity. And if that isn't spiritual, like I said before, I don't know what is. There are no police, no prisons, no armies, no navies, just people capable of informing other people as to the most advantageous direction to take to accomplish a sustainable society. About in, let me see. Okay, it says some articles say that it's enough to convince 10% of the people to make ideas spread all over. Is it enough for the Venus Project to convince 10%? Yes. The book, The Best That Money Can Buy, will give them the foundations of what the Venus Project proposes. This person is mentioning that 4,000 books of The Best That Money Can't Buy at $25 each is, um, what, 10 million? I don't know what. The, um, we have free access. Or 10, yeah. We have what? For the major motion picture, how many are sold now? Um, well, we have to put that money back in to print more books because we print them ourselves. So we'd have to reconfigure yeah, that. Pay for it. Yeah. How would Jack go about automating himself? It's a good question. That's what he's trying to do right now. <laughs> or creating an interactive Venus Project questioning booth of some kind. That's a good idea. Um, yes. Yeah, that's a very good idea. I think we've talked about something like that, but we really need more people to help in that type of thing. 
we would that would be a, a very good idea attending a oh, meeting is a, a this person's important. yeah jack has mentioned coming to the tours is important also are you familiar with the book sacred economics by charles eisenstein and no. the principles of a gift economy actually i just saw a video of his a well done video just a four minute video on the internet this morning uh let me see negative interest rates no we haven't read the book but he was he, he had a video about how things are changing and he he advocates a different value system of giving instead of personal interests and but he doesn't lay out a system you can't superimpose a value system on today's system where it doesn't generate and it, it doesn't reward you really with food housing clothing doesn't support you a, a giving type of society a giving type of attitude that's why you really need to lay out a new social design so those values can be perpetuated and generated and reinforced I would love to get in touch with him and talk with him. I'll see if we can somehow. He, he doesn't really, like so many people who are advocating something else and who are aggravated with the, and understand that the capitalist system does not work for the majority of people. They don't know what to do. They don't, they just have hopes and wishes and different types of value systems that they want people to have. And as I said, it doesn't work. So it doesn't correspond with the nature of the physical world. Well, it doesn't correspond with the capitalist system, that type of behavior that they have wishes and aspirations for. You have to design a new environment that generates that type of behavior, and that's what the Venus Project is about. And if you don't lay out exactly what that environment is, you're really not proposing anything. You're not helping. You're just wishing about something or angry that the system doesn't enable people to behave the way they want them to. I think it's inborn of human nature. I, b I believe that all behavior, our language, our facial expressions, our ambitions, the directions we take, are all inculcated by the society you live in. If you deviate too much, you will lose your job. In a video, Jacques talks about successfully scrapping the culture and about carrying some of the, quote, slime during life when the, habit, uh, when the habits and thoughts and the behavior are getting in the way. How can a person reduce the slime? How can one succeed? Yeah, I guess that's what it's supposed crossing. to be. Succeed in crossing the point of no return, sc scrapping the culture. It, it, Only through education by informing people exactly what the scientific method is. And if you don't know, look it up on the internet. And they're saying, how, how do we know if we've crossed or not? It's really a slow process of by how well the system works. No, he's talking, he's talking about how personally they can eliminate the, what you call the slime, the primordial slime that you take with you. From you can't Venus. eliminate it, you can outgrow it. You don't eliminate anything. You learn newer systems that are better than the ones you've been given by these social institutions. And that's a lifelong process. You're always learning new things and outgrowing old. There are no final frontiers. That reminds me of the story you talk about a psychologist I think you knew who came to you and said that they were a black person bumped into him. Oh, they, that's, a, that's, a, that's yeah. an interesting story. I, I just thought of it. With the, third, with the current economic crisis and the imminent collapse of the economic system, would we have the time to educate the people to how to transit to a resource-based company? I okay. wouldn't worry about that. I just get on to the job of educating people. If you do nothing, nothing will happen. Yeah, now is really the time to do it while we still can and as fast as possible. There are people that would love to control the Internet and manage it so that it serves their interest. If that ever happens, that would be a terrible thing. Keep the internet open. It's one of the great, greatest liberators of human values ever conceived. This person says, my father hates me when I talk or rely on him because he himself had no father. My father's father left him when he was young. 
my father always neglects me and as a result I hate my father tremendously I'm thinking that having a family is devastating too do you think that family should not exist in the Venus project I would say the family or the brotherhood of man will exist or the brotherhood of people will exist but the family as an institution and sharing values is not qualified. That's why we send our kids to high school, to private schools, or to a university, because we can't give them the best of values. We're not capable. We're not brought up to do such a thing. We're brought up, I don't know what family values mean. I really don't know what it means. People are not qualified to handle many problems. In other words, if you study agriculture, you will know where certain foods can be grown, where they cannot be grown, how to test the soil for insufficiency of nutrients. In other words, you have to learn these things. You're not born that way. There's no such thing as gifted people. All people undergo social exposure. And in their social exposure, they become members of various organizations that are detrimental to the growth of human development, such as the Ku Klux Klan, the White Citizens Council, the racist groups that exist today. All of them would have to be outgrown, not forced out, through education only. This person is asking about, what about Joe Rogan's show? I. Uh, a friend of ours got in touch with us since I think it was just a couple of nights ago and said that he contacted Joe and uh, asked to have Jacques on and Joe had mentioned that he saw Jacques speak and he would really he felt he was brilliant and he felt he would really like him on his show and um, so I don't know we haven't heard anything um, the question what about exemplar zero and NWO natural world organization and the project for Mongolia and Iceland, why is not the news on the official TVP website? Exemplar Zero last year mentioned that they wanted to give Jacques an award for his lifetime of work in 2011, and they wanted to have a conference to actually give him an award, but that never came about. I think they tried, but they, they couldn't organize it. Natural World, World Organization, Whatever Exemplar Zero is doing, we're really not involved in. It's a separate organization. We're friendly with them. They um, and and I think they were trying to do something in Mongolia, Mongolia that fell apart. The last I spoke to Sasha, who's the head of that, and I think they were contacting some people in Iceland. But I really don't know about it. I don't keep up with it. So it really is not anything we're involved in at this time. That we don't want to keep up with it. We don't have enough of a staff yeah. to handle all these problems. Okay. We're loaded right now with many problems. So we really appreciate everything everybody else is doing to help this too. How could people change profoundly if they don't experience in a different environment shaping? That's your job. No, how can you change if you're not immersed in a, a different environment? How can you, you change? You can only do the best you can. If you belong to a church or a club, present the concepts of the Venus Project to that club. If you do nothing, nothing will occur. I mentioned that. You have to work at it. You, you really have to read books, discuss things with people, try and approach people uh, to introduce them to the new values that you're learning. That helps you change as well. If you read specific books, not just any books. I am worried about the transition, which is now. Most of the people I've talked to about this almost act as if a messiah would arrive and form a global scale economic crisis and only then on a, a real transition occur. What's the question? I'm finding out. Oh, this person is, thinks we need a, a, a mid-state model for, for living through the transition, I, I'm assuming. We, you know, some people want to gather together and make a a community and that's fine to help them through the transition uh, but it's not what the Venus Project is really advocating it's not what will solve problems on a global scale you can't really go off to your by yourself and live in a community unless that community is advocating this direction I would I would say 
Religion is something that is hard to get around when spreading this message. How can we spread our message without making these people feel threatened, as if we were taking away from their beliefs? They won't be taken away from their beliefs. They can believe whatever they want to on their own time. But in developing the, the new society, you have to be an architect, an engineer, an agriculturist, somebody that knows how to provide food for people and store food uh, and also increase agricultural yield. You have to have those abilities to maintain sustainability. Religion does not maintain sustainability. It merely requests that we behave a certain way. And there's not always backup for those advocated directions. They do not necessarily work. The reason religion doesn't work is because there's still wars, there's still hatred, there's still armies and navies. And as long as you have that, you don't have religion. People talk to me about, is there a place for religion in the future? Yes, if it's put into work. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill. I don't know any Christians that behave that way. The Bible says, love your enemy. The Bible says, when a man strikes you, turn the other cheek. The Bible says, the love of money is the root of all evil. I don't see anybody behaving that way. So I would say the Bible has very little influence. The social culture, the media, television, radio, newspapers are all part of the establishment and they all push the established point of views. We don't want that. We want an emergent culture, not established. One that continually undergoes change and improvement. I said this a million times. There are no final frontiers, no best way to do anything. Um, well, you've answered this in some ways and see if you have anything else you want to add. He says, I'm just looking for good ways to approach religious people. By asking them to be honest with you first and asking them why they support war when the Bible says thou shalt not kill. It doesn't say you can kill Wednesday afternoon only. It says thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not judge other people and everybody does jury duty. So you can't exist, you can't practice your religion in this culture. You also have a lot of different stories for religious people about sac Jesus sacrificing. I don't know if you want to go into some of those to help them how to deal with religious people. No. Not now. And so those are longer stories. Read the book, The Best That Money Can Buy. You have to get the fundamentals of the Venus Project before you ask questions. Do you plan to involve famous persons, actors, performers, to rumor the Venus Project? Yes, that would be extremely useful. Not really. Only if those people are informed. I was going to say that. If they're interested in this, they will do that automatically. But we need to get information to them. If you'd like to join the media group to help contact those people, that would be great. I think there are a lot of famous people and actors out there that would be interested in the Venus Project. They, they really do try to be social and, and actually hurt their ability to get jobs sometimes by standing against war or trying to work to eliminate poverty or other things. So I, there are a lot of people, a lot of socially minded actors that might be interested. Has Buddhist philosophy had any contribution in shaping your beliefs? No. Oh, here is a follow-up for uh, the money that uh, is spent on the best that money can buy. And the person is asking uh, for an honest reply on where the money is spent on. The money is spent, it's kept to produce more books. It, it costs us a lot to have them printed. We're also supporting the center here. All our money goes towards promoting whatever we're doing, books and videos to get this across. We really spend, we don't, we don't do anything with money other than pay the electric bills, keep this place up, yes. eat, maintain the car and produce more more things to you know like it's I said cool. we're just doing a documentary now that we 
we pay for ourselves. We have no outside funding for it. Everything we do, all the, the videos and everything go towards making more videos and getting more equipment. And that's all we do with our money. You know, we don't go on vacations. We don't buy jewelry. We don't buy fancy clothes or cars or, you know, we have a very old car and that's about it. So it goes towards making more materials to get this information out there. Right, and uh, I want to add to this, um, the money that is actually donated to produce the major motion picture uh, has nothing to do with uh, the money that is actually uh, taken from selling uh, the products on the shop. So everything that is donated to the uh, motion picture is kept separate from any other money because this is dedicated money only for that motion picture and we guarantee that it's only going to be used for this. Yes. That's true. Yes, exactly right. That's not I don't look at that as our money. That's for the movie. So that's not touched at all. And uh, with that, we're aiming for 100,000 for a script writer. Um, and we are working with several script writers right now, seeing if they'll be able to work with us, seeing if they really understand this. So we we are always working towards that and refining what we have already. Right. Um, again, uh, uh, in regards to the money spent, he's uh, asking also uh, if we are, are advocating an anti-monetary system, why do we ask for money? And he goes on, he understands that uh, we still live in a monetary system and have to make money to support uh, both uh, our standard of living or basically to make a living and also support a new course. But uh, he's actually afraid that people might uh, call out this being uh, hypocrites. Uh, how do you recommend that we publish books and maintain the videotapes um, without money? I we have to pay electric bills. We just like you do. We have to buy gasoline to travel. Mm -hmm. We don't live in a, in a moneyless system. So we live in this transition. And during the transition, I don't know anybody that doesn't work for money to help to support themselves. There are people who live under viaducts or sleep in the streets. They can't participate. They can't buy anything. They can't pay the rent. They can't pay for electric bills or clothing. So in this system, this is transitional. You have to work to earn money to get by. And this is, we're under the same pressures everyone else is under. Yeah. Automobile insurance, new new air conditioning for $4,000, you know, health insurance we have to buy. Otherwise, in America, they can attach, they can attach your home if you don't pay your health bills. They can take it away. Also, you know, when tax season comes, they don't say you're doing a great humanitarian work. You don't have to pay your taxes. You know, we have to do all that, too. What is your opinion about Anonymous, the, the group? Well, I don't, I don't think they advocate much. I, don't, I haven't heard anything that they really advocate. Okay, what about the Holy War in Korea? How can we overcome the barrier? I mean, wait, hold on. Either you inform people as to the, how invalid the system is, what the shortcomings are. And if you don't know that, you have to study that so that you can inform people. This person is worried about, I mean, what are the barriers to overcome the fanatic, fanaticists who want to kill every non-Islamic person? I think that they've been propagandized. What you have to do is give them information in terms they can accept. And that depends on your skill in dealing with people. You have to practice that and become very good at it. I've been able to turn a lot of people around because I don't attack. If you don't attack, if you merely point out the shortcomings of a system where, where inadequacies lie and the shortcomings of communication, you can tell them that two people or ten people can read the same book and come up with different interpretations. That's because language is subject to interpretation except scientific language like chemistry, mathematics, engineering. The language has uniform meaning to different nations, 
but and to all people that study the scientific disciplines. The principles of chemistry can be applied anywhere in the world. The everyday language is always subject to interpretation, and that's the danger. How will you and we ensure that the Venus Project will not be misguided after our current leaders? I don't know that what that means, after our current leaders. That's why we publish our books and make our tapes, yeah. so it can't be misguided. You will understand when the, a person goes in some offshoot direction that's not related to the Venus Project. And if it's not related to the methods recommended by the Venus Project, I cannot defend it. Um, would Jacques be interested in coming to Europe for seminars again? We we uh, we financed that whole trip ourselves, and we just can't afford to do that again. We would have to be financed to go out there. You know, we paid for everything: the hotels and the plane tickets and all the advertising and the venues. We just can't afford to do that anymore. Unless we're sponsored. Yeah, we have to be sponsored by a university or something like that. Universities usually pay a fee for the lecture. They pay your way out there. They pay your hotel. They pay, you know, your food, too. So that's the only way we could do we that. We just don't have the fat guy with a cigar that says, what do you need? I'll provide it. But, but don't ask us to pay for all these things and call yourself part of a cooperative society. Cooperative means working together, helping to attain these ends, not putting the load on Jock and Roxanne, that's just too much. How can we assure the public that technological unemployment won't lead to depopulation? And if you're talking about in the Venus Project, not, not at all. In fact, I don't know of any other group that talks about and works technically on how to feed, clothe, and house everyone. You know, we never talk about depopulation. We talk about population control through education eventually. People will understand that they just can't populate. Like the the Pope says, go out and go forth and multiply. But he doesn't he doesn't take care of people if the if the parents can't. If the church says go forward and multiply, will they sign an agreement if we have a population far in excess? of what natural resource can provide, will they guarantee the support of people? Of course, if they don't sign anything, they're just putting the load on you. And today, when technology comes in and people become unemployed, the government doesn't care about that. They might give them unemployment compensation for six months, and then they don't even count them on the list as being unemployed when they don't get compensation. So there's a lot more people unemployed than what's listed out there. They don't care today. People just starve, people die because they can't get medication in this country. So, you know, it's totally oh, opposite. Uh, uh, uh. Can I ask a question, Ross? Sure. Can Jock explain in a step-by-step -step process how automation will eventually collapse the current monetary system and the ability for property is the profit. Can you can you can you explain in a step by step process how automation will will have people become unemployed and crash the system? Okay. If people understand that most American industries of British, French, German are automating and the more you automate, the more people are displaced. The more people that are displaced, the less purchasing power they have to buy radios, vacuum cleaners, apartments, buildings, all things. So if you, if you continue this system of automation, if I don't employ a lot of people, that will not be able to buy the products produced. And that will bring the system to an end. It doesn't advocate destroying the system, revolution, social evolution will displace this system, not the Venus Project. When people lose their homes, their jobs, and they don't get compensation, they will riot. And the government will use the police, the Marines, the National Guard to try to hold society in check and prevent complete breakdown. It's called fascism. And fascism is usually the end product 
of most social systems. And once that's installed, it's very hard to disengage it. That's why this is the time for you to inform people, inform people of different possible directions that society can take. And you have to show them the most sustainable system you know of, present it to them. If you fail to do that, you will fail to affect sustainability. I, there's a question about somebody wanting to to do a website to see if they could get people interested in donating one to ten dollars towards the movie to be able to do it directly. And they could write to me directly on this. I, I'd rather just talk to them about that in more length. So that's meadows at the Venus Project dot com. Just in regards to uh, any development on a uh, website or the like, uh, please CC. Uh, admin at the venusproject.com as well, please. Um, in relation to frequently asked questions, 107, the last one is that your official position towards, is that your official towards this, quote, split, even though it is, has a personal disclaimer in the video. Thanks. Um, we put that video up there. We thought that that was pretty fair and, and pretty good answer to the split. There's many other things that happen, but yeah, that answers some questions. How can um, biology sciences aid the Venus Project right now? How can biology sciences aid the Venus Project right I'm now? I'm talking about the Venus Project. Presenting it in assimilable terms so that the people or the opposition to it is clarified. So you have to... Most opposition to the Venus Project is things like it will not work, it's against human nature. These are all opinions. They're not based on surveys. Anything else? We just have a minute or so. Anybody it's like to... saying man can never achieve certain things. Man will never fly. Man will never be able to take photographs of people. In other words, a lot of people that have limitations in their thinking, and they project those limitations upon everybody else. There are certain problems that, that are difficult to solve. But all people have certain problems such as cancer, heart disease, scarcity, and we tend to work on all those problems. We don't think there are problems that cannot be solved. We think that every time the government assigns scientists to a project such as putting men on the moon, they put men on the moon. And making weapons of mass destruction, they made weapons of mass destruction. That's why I say they're not scientists. They're subservient to the government they work with or live with or brought up with. If you had scientists, they'd work on the social system. That would work. You don't work in the service of an established society. Every country had their scientists working on their side. That isn't science. That's influenced by an established culture. A scientist would say, what makes war? Why do people hate? Why did they fly into the towers? What motivated such hatred as to enable them to fly and hijack airplanes? We never hear that on TV. We always hear how horrible people are to do those things. What makes them do those things? What is their reason for doing it? Do you know that? Well, until you do, you cannot judge the system. Uh, some jobs will still have to be filled, uh, at least until the end of the transition. How will the supply and demand be coordinated if not based on secondary working conditions? For example, uh, you, you want to answer that? For example, almost all medics who choose to be a dentist or urologist choose this specialism based on the secondary conditions such as working times and salaries. Okay. If you're talking about the transition after the survey, we will find out how many people do seek dental advice. But those that do seek dental advice have the money to back it up. There are many people that, that require much dental treatment, but do not have the purchasing power. We do a survey of how many people need dental assessment that determines how many dentists we turn out. Well, I, I think this person's asking, um, 
how would you get people to to work at at jobs that might take more hours, like they choose to be dentists or urologists because they're, it's a lighter workload? How do you get people to work at things that are more difficult, longer hours? By varying the incentive. Uh, in other words, who does the dirty work? For the dirty work, you might work three hours a day and have a vacation rather than a week, a couple of months. You vary the incentives and the schooling and things of that sort, but you don't hurt people. You vary the incentives to based on the availability of resources. In other words, we may need people to do some dirty work during the transition, and no one will want to do that work unless you vary the incentives without the use of purchasing power. Should we work on getting the Venus Project completely self-sustainable first through photovoltaics and hydroponic systems, then spread this technology from Venus? Should we become self-sufficient first? You have to produce the resources to meet people's needs. If you fail to do that, you will always have problems. If few nations control most of the Earth's resources, such as water, arable land, other nations that don't have access to that will get into territorial disputes. That's a byproduct of a social system. It's not to get people greedy or self-centered. If you deprive people of the necessities of life, they will fight back. You have to make things available to people to overcome those problems. You don't make laws say thou shalt not steal. If you control most of the water of an area and people don't have access to it, they will steal water from you. You have to get rid of the conditions that produce aberrant behavior. If you don't know what that means, frame your question differently. Aberrant behavior is generated. It's not an instinct in human beings. I'm not sure. What, for example, um, if I demand a new telephone, who's going to act, I guess, access and transmit and how in a global resource-based economy? Yeah. If you have difficulty with that concept, consider the public library. You have to have more books than people check out. And if you have sufficient books and people can check it out without a price tag, you have to have a camera center where people can check out a camera without a price tag. You have to have a musical instrument center where people can check out musical instruments. You have to have the library system available in all areas. If people don't have a lawnmower, they can check it out from the lawnmower center. In other words, you have to have access centers like the public library. That will do away with 90% of the crimes. In the transitional period of the Venus Project, were there still will there still need to be a select group of people that will be designated as a security force to protect people in the Venus Project during the transition period? If the transition is uh, only few people that understand the Venus Project, it cannot be achieved. It can only be achieved if people understand the direction of the Venus Project. He's asking, do we need security force to protect those no, you need educational forces to protect those. It's only through education that you can do the new things. You cannot do it by force. You know, we tell people we send armies in to bring democracy to undeveloped countries. That isn't true. We send armies in because they have oil or some material we need. We don't do it to benefit other people. All that's propaganda. I guess that's about it. What will happen to weapons and material arts in the it's Venus It's converted project? to useful materials. Yeah. Okay, I guess that's about it for today. Thanks, everyone, for showing Thank up. Thank you very much for the opportunity to attempt to present the answers. It isn't easy if you're brought up to a certain value system. You know, the Catholics can't share ideas with the Protestants. 
the Afro-Americans cannot go to a Klan meeting and give their point of view and a request a counter view because they can't talk to each other. The Jewish people cannot go to a Nazi meeting and share, and share the, the, the Jewish traditions with the Nazis. They're brought up not to understand each other. That's why you have so much conflict. People cannot communicate. If you don't understand that, watch your TV, watch your Republicans and Democrats. They both lie about each other. They do, they do not communicate. They don't say, what is your point of view regarding that? That's very interesting. I've learned something new. They fight each other. They lie about each other because the system of education is insufficient. Okay, so we'll talk with you next week. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Right, thanks everyone for being here and thank you Roxanne and Jack for joining us and answering all those questions. Thank you for your time.